But now, I, I would now like to request the Honorable Vice Chancellor to kindly address the gathering on this August occasion. Sir. Vice Chancellor Professor Mohammad Gurriz, Restart Mr. Mohammad Imran, Finance Officer, Controller of Examinations, Dean of Students Welfare, Proctor, Deans of Faculties, Principals, Directors, Provosts, Chairpersons, other university functionaries, my dear students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good morning to everyone. At the outset, my warmest wishes and greetings to all of you on the occasion of the 74th Republic Day of our country. The day of 26th January is of great significance in Indian history as it marks the day when the Constitution of India came into effect, replacing the Government of India Act 1935 as the governing document of India. The Indian Constitution, with Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the Chairman of the Drafting Committee, is the largest written constitution of any sovereign country. It establishes the framework for the Government of India and guarantees certain fundamental rights to its citizens. The fundamental rights enshrined in Part 3rd of the Indian Constitution provide to its citizens the right to equality, right to equality, freedom of religion, property, right to own property, and constitutional remedies among others. Democracy and secularism are also the, the basic features of our Constitution. For all of us, this is the day to pause and ponder over the core values that the Constitution propounds. These values, justice, liberty, equality and fraternity outlined in the preamble of our Constitution are sacred to all of us. I'd like to go further back into history and inquire why precisely these values guided our nation builders and the answer is obvious. This land and its inhabitants have cherished these ideals from time immemorial and these values are perennial principles of our philosophy of life. The public day is a time for all Indians to come together and celebrate the values and principles that make our country great. It is a time to remember the sacrifices and struggles of our freedom fighters and to reaffirm our commitment to building a better, more prosperous and inclusive nation for all citizens. Our freedom movement was not merely a struggle against foreign rule. It was also a struggle to rejuvenate our country and to transform our society. Let us also remember that drafting the constitution from a huge and diverse country like India was not an easy affair. Despite all the difficulties, the makers of the Indian constitution ensured the right to freedom and equality, justice, liberty and protected the rights of all citizens of this great land, including the minorities. As we celebrate this day, let us remember that we have much work to do to ensure that our constitutional values are upheld and every citizen has access to education, health care and a fair chance to succeed. It is our collective responsibility to build a better future for all and to create a more equitable and just society. Ladies and gentlemen, on this Republic Day, let us renew our commitment to building a strong and vibrant nation that is respected and admired by the world. As we gather here today to celebrate India's 74th Republic Day, I am filled with a deep sense of pride and gratitude for what our country has achieved in various fields. It is a matter of great honor and profound prestige that India has assumed the G20 presidency and will hold the G20 Leader Summit for the first time in this country. A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism India's G20 presidency will be a watershed moment in its history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of the world as one family. The global order has faced the challenges of international financial stability, food sufficiency, climate change and sustainable development. India's G20 presidency will, look to, will work to promote the universal sense of oneness 
has a team. One earth, one family, one future. India slowly but surely emerging as an important player on the world stage, Alhamdulillah. The founding fathers of our great nation had visualized the future with mutual coexistence of various religions, cultures, languages and ethnicities. The vision of our legendary founder, Sir Sayyid Amakha, also envisaged the idea of India, unity in diversity. Hence, the portals of the university have always remained open to all irrespective of the caste, creed, region and religion. With the untiring efforts of our faculty and students, we have been successful in making Aligarh Muslim University as one of the leading education institutions of India, Alhamdulillah. Known for its high quality education and research, and this is manifested in the accreditation by various agencies like NAC, NBA, etc., and good rankings by various national and international agencies like NIRF, Times Higher Education, and QS. We have opened many new courses and branches in various fields for our students to enhance the employment and placement potential. We are now working with the office of our former Chancellor and a spiritual leader of the Bora community, His Holiness Sayyidina Mufaddal Saifuddin Sahab, to establish an institute of pharmacy. We have also applied in the HIFA to construct separate hostels for research scholars, international students, sports persons, and general students, as well as enhancement of infrastructure of various faculties and departments. We are also trying to enhance the seating capacity of Maulana Azad Library and making efforts to maintain and restore our heritage buildings. On this occasion, I thank the entire AMU community, faculty, students, alumni, and well-wishers for the help and cooperation. In the end, I exhort everyone to strengthen our democracy by being united, committed, and positive in our attitude. Let us force forward confidently to a healthy, strong, and self-reliant India. Thank you. Jai Hind.